still on her instead. And that means Eckerman starts out on the bench for this set for Texas. And it is Nicole Dalton who will start out as their setter in the 6-2 offense. Gray finds the corner. And I'm just not sure Texas has seen a hitter, a handful of a hitter, WCC Conference Player of the Year, like Alexa Gray. She's just going over into the corner. Texas is going to have to make some adjustments in the backcourt defensively. Out of Calgary in Canada, Alexa Gray. This time it's to Hampson. Boy, when you've got her on one side and Gray on the other as a blocker, where are you going? It's tough. And that time, Texas even trying to get a third blocker. Watch Cat yeah. Bell's trying to get her way over there and get involved. Two blockers up, but Bell was thinking about it. And another poor pass, so Texas' offense has to go to the left side. Ooh, lost chance for BYU. You've got to get hands over. Got it inside the block that time. Point Texas, and it's Kat McCoy back to serve. As Eckerman remains on the sideline, Abago is in up front, number 11 in the white jersey. Good short serve. Hampson will try and clean it up. She rolls it over the top and finds the floor. Remember, BYU started out with a roll shot, found success. I think there's something they saw on film. Either there's not enough clarity in the backcourt for Texas or not enough good eye work. A two for two on the roll shot. Back set to Bell. I think Texas is really going to have to rely on some of these veterans. And Cat Bell wants that ball, and she gets it right here. Yeah, and she's having more success hitting this part of the court, the left, the left third of the court, as she was getting at us. Holly Rowe referenced uh, about how they didn't think they were prepared properly as a, a, in mentally for Wisconsin last year in the national semis. They are playing with a much greater sense of urgency was their plan today coming in for Texas as they try and win their second national championship in three years. Yeah, I think they're ready. They yep. just know that if they don't pass really well and they can't get the ball to Obaku and they have to set it out to the left sides, that's not a great matchup for them. That's the matchup Texas wants. Even though there were three blockers up on that play, Obagu has the advantage. Nicely executed by Texas. Perfect pass. Obagu hits it off the block. And that's what Texas wants. More balance in their offense, not just setting high left side. And now, of course, Haley Ackerman gets in because they've rotated. Ackerman is up front alongside Obagu, and Ackerman immediately gets a point. What's at stake here in the semis? BYU looking for their first trip to the final. There has never been an unseeded team that has played for the national championship. And for Texas, well, they've been here six times in the last seven years. They've gotten one trophy during that stretch, and they want another one with a veteran team here. Tried to go cross court with it right to Eckerman. Makes the pass, gets it back, misses it long. Jennifer Hampson is back to serve. Had those eight kills in the opening set. Texas gets the point, ends her serve at just one. And now it's Abagu who will go back to serve for Texas. Parker with the pass. They go to Boswell and the solo stuck by McCage. They started to celebrate two In fact, it wasn't close to being down. Great up by Boswell, the hitter, and then she gets a swing. The cage has got to stay with the play through the through the whistle. And tooling off the block, Prieto Sarame. The transfer from Penn State who could face her former teammates in the final. 
Penn State Stanford in our second simulator tonight. Robbins Hurdy. Great try to roll it and a trickle back over the net, but wide. Point BYU, the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship continues with the championship match on Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, visit NCAA.com. Your home for all 89 NCAA championships. The slide to Bell just had to push that one across. Hampson out of the back row. Joust at the net, falls to the Texas side. Back to Gray, through the block and down. This was Coach Olmstead's first big recruit. Yep. He even got pressure from the old BYQ, BYU coach, old Nicholas, just saying, you've got to land her. She's, she saw her in the summer camp, and that's exactly what he did, and it's helped BYU play at a very high level these last few years. Greg got that one sent back, Point Texas. It's been a remarkable uh, journey and overcoming tragedy for Alexa Gray to get here tonight. Big serve from Eckerman. Here's Gray with a chance. The block waiting. Gray with another effort. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Alexa Gray was riding in a car at 13 years old with her mother and her sister Jordan in a car accident in Utah. Their mother, Stacy French, a very good athlete herself, was killed. Alexa went to live with her aunt and uncle in Canada. Six other kids were already in that household, but she has made it through and now playing very well for BYU. Coach Olmstead gives her such credit for the resiliency of that and how it helps her on the court. Volleyball is such a nice... Uh, outlet in some ways for her she's been huge for this BYU program she's got them peaking at the right time they've won their last 11 matches including the upset of the three seeded opponents in their last three matches as Greg gets the kill and then rotates out Tia Welling will come on to serve Hampson gets to hit against an Amy Neal, not as good a blocker as Eckerman across the net. And and first the ace of the night. Point Cougars. That was the key for BYU. Tough serving and good blocking. So far executing the plan well. Jared Elliott calls the timeout for Texas. They are down three and down a set in the national semis. BYU is their maturity and their experience on this stage, and right now would be a good time to call on some of that, as they have players that have been here and have won a national championship. And here's one of them, Bell, and the block is up for BYU. Check in with Holly. Well, in that last Longhorn huddle, their coach, Jared Elliott, said all of the little things that we usually do well, we've got to be doing much better. Their assistant coach said, your feet are way too active. You're running around. You're frantic. I need you to calm down, see the ball, and play more calmly. Bell, right off of her second in a row for BYU. Two stuffs in a row, and that's not Alexa Gray at the net. That's... Another BYU player, number 15, Tamber Nobles, doing a really nice job with her left side block. And here's another opportunity with a poor pass from Texas. Neal gets the kill. Amy, the junior from Austin, former high school player of the year in Texas, and really the player that they may look to now for that sort of leadership and emotional energy. Certainly she touches the ball a lot, but we asked them yesterday, what was one great moment of adversity was when they lost to Oklahoma. They didn't have Neil on the court, but felt like they 
had a lot of resilience in terms of turning right back around, getting back to business. They're going to have to do that in this. They're getting challenged a lot by the BYU block. Hampson over the top of the block. Got a touch. Point Texas and the Longhorns disagree vehemently. And as I was watching that line call, you could have made an argument that that ball was in even if there wasn't a touch. But that call very close to the end line. Into the net, Abagu tried to shove it across. Well, you were just mentioning that maturity and that patience. This looks like a very impatient Texas team right now. Stabbing at the ball, trying to catch it high. Good call on the timeout by Jared Elliott. You've got to, if you want to get Texas back into this, you've got to calm them down. Down 16 to 10 in set number two. All the momentum in the Blue Jersey clan from Provo. 16 to 10 Cougars in front of the two seed. Texas has got to reset at this point to pull themselves in. There is a lot of game still to go, but if you hit low shots into the strong BYU blockers, this is tough. And that's the best BYU combination with Hampson at 6'7 and Boswell at 6'4 at the net. And Texas playing right into the hands of BYU when BYU can force a poor pass and Texas has to hit the left side. Already the ninth block now for BYU. The service error gives Texas a point. Here comes Haley Eckerman back onto the floor. Yeah, and remember that Texas changed. You can have any one of your six players on the floor be the first server, so they spun it around and got Eckerman away from Hampson. But it's actually turned out to be a worse matchup for Texas down set six points here. Eckerman is rejected. Hampson and Boswell side by side. This is what Texas was trying to avoid. They do so now because Hampson, watch her set up and take that line, dive into her left. But now Hampson's in the backcourt, so Eckerman doesn't have to worry about hitting against the Hampson block. Texas won't get a good swing here. A chance for BYU in transition. The tip and down. Tamber Nobles, the senior from Longmont, Colorado. Remember, Nobles started the match with a roll shot. They've had se success with several other off-speed shots. Texas is not in a good position to play defense. Huh? The eye work is not there right now. Terrific by Parker. Now Collins looking back to Eckerman. Off the tips. Point Texas. If this does not turn around, once all year, Texas has trailed to zip. That was back in September at West Virginia. They did rally to win that match. And they switched to a one-setter offense in that match to turn it around. So if they lose this... We'll keep an eye out as to where they start and whether they run two setters or one in their offense. Nice move that time by Haley Eckerman on the slide. Or whether the seniors can lead the rally here in the second. Obagu serving. Robbins Hardy, the back set to Hampson, and that one's blocked. And Texas now showing a little something. And you remember earlier, late in the first set, Coach Elliott complained about a mishandled ball. I think that complaint got the later mishandled call to give uh, Texas that 14th point just now. Now BYU will call the timeout. They're up 19 to 14. And with the lead after taking the opening set. Now Texas... It's a good news, bad news situation. You've been good enough in the course of the last six years to be a constant here at the national semis and even in the championship match. But you have not won as many as you would have hoped. They do have the championship from 2012. 
heartache in 2008 and 2009 when they lost both a semifinal and the championship match when they were up 2-0. And then the disappointing loss in the semis last year has really tried to rally this Texas team this season. I think the biggest thing is we know where we have to do. Uh, we're a new team, and we knew that last year was the, a different team, and we have new players, and we just have to come out and take every team serious. Um, last year, we kind of didn't take Wisconsin as serious as we should, and we know that we have to come out and battle and give it our all, and that everybody's going to play the toughest match against us. I think Texas is utterly mentally prepared for the fact that or, or uh, came in with utter respect for BYU, but what they couldn't prepare for was the level of blocking and, and the high contact point of a Jen Hansen and Alexa Gray who are often hitting over. And so 10 blocks now for BYU, which helps create havoc for Texas's offensive efficiency, hitting 145, half their season average. And Haley Eckerman right now is hitting negative four kills with five errors and another thundering drive from BYU and Nobles. Second facial of the match. Yeah, and these are the kinds of hits that you'd expect from Alexa Gray, but Noble's delivering it, finding the space between the blocks. Now Gray is, of course, back onto the court. Here's another opportunity for a block on the poor pass by Texas. Off the tips, point Texas. Texas looking for a change here, bringing in a different opposite, Pilar Victoria, number three, as they're looking for a combination that they still own. Oh, Head over by the Libro McCoy. And no chance to respond on that one. The swing from Alexa Gray. I know plenty of opponents in conference who just, they play grave for so much angle, so much cross court, and they still can't stop it. They'll have three defenders over there and not be able to bring that ball in the air. Victoria with the tip right into the block of the center, Robbins Hardy. This set was low and tight, and the center, Robbins Hardy, in a great position to take advantage. Texas, and now BYU is two points from the set, and a commanding 2-0 lead, trying to become the first unseeded team in 34 years to reach the finals. That pass shanked, Eckerman will try and clean it up, Victoria out of the back and it doesn't go over, and the set points are piled up for the Cougars. Boswell serving. Bell had to swing on to Hampson. We'll try and end it. Wide. Another set point. Michigan was here in 2012 unseated. Santa Clara in 2005. Both of those sides lost in the semis. And that Michigan team put a heck of a scare into Texas before the Horns won that match and then won the national championship. And the two seed is in big trouble in the semis. BYU, impressive in getting out to the 2-0 lead.